Hi, my name is Arian Rivera. I am a livestock farmer. I've worked as a livestock manager. I originally was introduced to agriculture by Farm School NYC, and I'm very honored to be here today. Hello, I'm Justin Butts, the livestock manager at Soul Fire Farm. And today I'm going to be teaching you about pasture raised poultry. So why chickens? I'm here to talk to you about chickens because we have a long history as black people of raising chickens um, and also of raising pastured poultry. And so this is a phrase that, you know, people are throwing around as if it's new or if this is a new concept. But in fact, our ancestors have been raising chickens in Africa. They were part of managed rotational grazing systems that involved livestock in conjunction with raising crops. Uh, it was a way to spread fertility. And then once we were brought to this continent, you know, in bondage, laws were passed that forbade black folks from having their own farm animals. But the one exception to that was chickens um, because it was thought that the chicken was insignificant. And so as we look to establish viable food businesses and to make a few dollars doing what we love, small scale poultry production is pretty profitable without too much initial investment. A lot of times a small poultry production can be more profitable than a small vegetable production. So chickens are one of the best animals to start farming with and chickens are the cheapest to get started with in terms of like cost for startup. Uh, in terms of inputs it's not very expensive and it's also a very quick turnover compared to other livestock. Uh, and then also when you're processing them on the farm, you're saving on food miles, you're not transporting them in between places and there's less chances for contamination. They're not going to a big plant where there've been chickens from a bunch of other farms. There's only been animals from our farm here. So something else you wanna think about when you're keeping chickens is what's your main purpose? So traditionally chicken breeds were all dual purpose breeds and they could lay eggs and they were good for meat. But as we became more specialized in agriculture, it diverted and made two different lines. Chickens that have faster metabolism and make more eggs. And then chickens that put on weight better and are better for meat. And so typically you get one or the other. Most folks are not raising dual purpose birds these days, but there's plenty of heritage breeds around. If you are looking for a dual purpose chicken, um, I encourage you to do your research, find something that you like. So chickens have to be fed, every, all animals on the farm have to be fed every day. Um, each egg layer eats a quarter pound of food a day and meat birds just have constant access to food every day. Also, when you're thinking about the types of chicken that you have, you wanna make sure that you have the right feed for them. So getting a layer feed versus a broiler feed and realizing they have different protein contents. An egg layer mix is 16% protein, which is typically what you want to give egg laying birds. Meat birds, you want to have around 21% protein. I also provide them with a ground oyster shell to give them a calcium supplement because they're laying eggs and that depletes the calcium that they have available. You also want to make sure not to overfeed your hens because they also will slow down making eggs. So there's uh, various kinds of feeders that you can use. I happen to use range feeders. I like ones that are bigger that I only have to, that I can put a whole bag of food in. Um, in. In terms of waterers, I like to have a waterer with a float valve that gives them a constant flow of water, but there, there's also some bell style waterers that I've used in the past that worked kind of well. I would recommend something that connects to the hose so you don't have to be carrying out buckets of water. A consideration is the fencing. So when we're doing the fencing, you wanna make sure that your fence is set up nice and taut. I like to use the inside of my boot to kick the metal post out so you can take out all the slack between them. And then you wanna push it down into the ground all the way to the black line, the bottom string, which is a black line. Right above that, you usually have a white and black string. All of those strings carry electrical current and you wanna make sure that those are not touching any metal and that they're not making too much contact with the grass because that'll make your electric fence short out. Most commonly we use electronet fencing. It's not too expensive. You can get a hundred foot length usually for about a hundred dollars and it lasts for a few years, but it's very lightweight, it's portable. So it allows you to move your chickens around pretty frequently. And it also provides really good predator protection. The key is to make sure that you maintain the fence. If you start to notice it gets frayed, you want to repair it and then maybe think about starting to replace it. It's also good to keep a nice, hot electric charge on it. So 
you can either use a solar energizer, you can use the battery power energizer, but you want to test it at least daily to make sure you still have a good charge on your fence. So fond of this idea, I learned um, biomimicry. But if you look at how animals move in nature, in the ecosystem, there's a rotation, there's multi-species. And so when we're farming, we can aspire to do things in a way that mimic nature. Um, and to have as many different species on the same piece of land, it adds vitality, adds microbes to the soil. You got different sized hooves and claws and beaks scratching at and loosening up the soil. The issue is you have to come up with a plan to do that. And so that's when you get into managed rotational grazing. So here on Soul Fire Farm, we practice what's called uh, rotational grazing. Um, but you mainly do that with ruminants, but with poultry, we're using them to follow the ruminants, our sheep and uh, our other animals. We're using them to follow them to remove excess pests from the plots. And also the chickens put down a lot of nitrogen, which is a good fertilizer. It's one of the three main fertilizers and it's, it saves us from having to to buy in anything from buy in fertility from off the farm we're able to produce our own fertility here by using our meat birds and we're also producing a source of protein for the house which is very important so here we have the meat birds and they live in this portable chicken coop called a chicken tractor and it can hold approximately a hundred birds inside of it and i move it once a day every day and it's important that you do move it every day because there's so many birds concentrated, uh, it, it will put down too much nitrogen for the soil. So you do need to keep it moving. The chicken tractors that I built are, I, I specifically built them to be large enough to hold a hundred birds because I wanted to have the, as much space inside as possible so I could do the maximum amount of chickens. And then I wanted them to be small enough that I could move them myself and you also want them to have a little bit of weight so they don't blow away in the wind. They're, the ones I use also, I don't need to put electric fencing around them to keep predators out because I've had a couple layers of metal to protect the birds. We talk about our egg layers. I move them typically once a week. Basically, I'm moving them for a similar reason to why I move the meat birds every day. Uh, they do put down a lot of nitrogen when they uh, leave their droppings on the ground. And also, they, they, chickens are animals that scratch when they're looking for food. So they'll actually provide like a mowing service, like like instead of coming in for a lawnmower, you can actually just have your chickens move from th this piece to that piece to that piece. And that's what we do here. Here is our egg laying coop, um, our hen house, you can call it. Uh, this one is nice because it can hold 150 chickens inside, which will give us lots of eggs. It has plenty of nest boxes. You want, you want one nest box per every probably five to eight chickens. So to move the chickens, uh, the first thing I do is go out uh, usually the night before or very early in the morning when it's dark out and I'll, uh, I'll make sure all the chickens are inside the chicken house. And then the next day I will come out in the morning and there won't be any chickens in the pen. I'll pick up all the fencing that keeps the chickens contained. And then I'll, uh, I'll drive in with the tractor. I'll connect it to the chicken house and I'll pull the chicken house to the next space. Once I have the new fence in place, I'll open the door and let the chickens out in the pasture and they're very excited to eat new bugs and uh, scratch at new grass and enjoy their new pen. Now, after all of our hard work, we get to collect some eggs. Chickens will typically start, egg layers anyway, will typically start laying eggs after about 17 weeks. And uh, each chicken, uh, if you have uh, a very a, a very good egg laying breed will lay one egg a day throughout the summertime from the end of May until the end of November. And then at that point, it, it slows off a lot. And then in the middle of winter, if you don't give them artificial light, they'll actually just stop laying eggs entirely. We have about 35 birds here in the pen and they should be laying at 80% capacity at this point because we're well past the 17 weeks. So we should get around 30 eggs uh, today. So it's important to collect eggs every day. Um, if you have a rooster in the pen, after about three days, uh, they'll start developing baby chicks inside. If you don't have a rooster, the eggs will actually not start developing. Um, they, eggs don't necessarily need to be refrigerated, but it's, it is safer. But once they're in the fridge, don't, don't take them back out and leave them out. We use egg mats inside of our nests rather than using straw or some kind of wood chip bedding. And that actually, I find keeps the eggs very clean. I do wash any leftover 
mud the chickens might have left on the eggs off, uh, just using some water. I put the eggs in, the, in a walk-in refrigerator to get cold the night before I washed them. That way, if they're cold, they won't absorb any of the water. So in conventional agriculture, you would see uh, meat birds inside of large chicken houses, and they basically live inside these confined spaces for, you know, the eight weeks of their life, and then they're, then they're processed. Whereas I don't really think that's right. I kind of think animals have a right to be outside and to live in nature. So we raise our chickens outside in our, in our pasture here. So one of the great things about chickens, unlike the other livestock, is that you can do everything on farm yourself, including processing. With large livestock, you know, you have to butcher and schedule an appointment at the slaughterhouse. But with a little bit of practice, you can get really good at processing your own chickens and selling them to people or keeping them for you and your family. For me, processing is closing the loop. You know, we're honoring our creator, whatever you believe in. And to take the animal's life respectfully is very important to me. So on my first farm, I actually, I took over someone else's farm and they gave me the keys one day and I had 500 chickens all of a sudden and I had never kept any animals before. I got a very quick understanding for how intelligent chickens are and just the wonderful things that they can do for the farm. And it's just, they're laying eggs every day. There's nothing else on the farm that's quite like a chicken where you, it reliably, I call them hen fruit. It, li it reliably gives you something to look at. It's not, on a farm, it can be a very quick source of, of, of income. It's a wonderful way to bring people onto the farm. And yeah, this is great to have. So I, I definitely recommend having egg laying chickens. So chickens are great for a small farmer um, for a bunch of reasons we already talked about, including the ability to have your own eggs that you raised. Um, but then also, there's plenty of demand for pasture-raised chicken, organic chicken, chicken that was raised thoughtfully. Um, and there's plenty of communities out there that'll support a small poultry farmer. And so just wanna reiterate that there is a lot of business opportunity. You know, it makes sense financially also to consider pasture poultry. I hope that you learned something today and that you enjoyed our video. And I hope that you work with animals if you're interested in it. I think that we learn a lot about ourselves as humans through our interactions with animals and how we work with animals. And so I hope that your journey has been as fun and informative as mine has. And I love Soul Fire. Thank you for making this possible.